Breaking, Trump makes major change to Muslims' Ramadan celebration in America, look what he did instead. Finally, those of us who know the truth about the so-called religion of peace have a president who isn't trying to sell us a bag of goods while we watch people die on a regular basis because of a poisons ideology which should be banned not just in the United States, but worldwide. Today President Donald Trump made his first official statement on the beginning of the holy Islamic month of Ramadan. The statement read, On behalf of the American people, I would like to wish all Muslims a joyful Ramadan. During this month of fasting from dawn to dusk, many Muslims in America and around the world will find meaning and inspiration in acts of charity and meditation that strengthen our communities. At its core, the spirit of Ramadan strengthens awareness of our shared obligation to reject violence, to pursue peace, and to give to those in need who are suffering from poverty or conflict. This year, the holiday begins as the world mourns the innocent victims of barbaric terrorist attacks in the United Kingdom and Egypt, acts of depravity that are directly contrary to the spirit of Ramadan. Such acts only still are resolved to defeat the terrorists and their perverted ideology. On my recent visit to Saudi Arabia, I had the honor of meeting with the leaders of more than 50 Muslim nations. There, in the land of the two holiest sites in the Muslim world, we gather to deliver together an emphatic message of partnership for the sake of peace, security, and prosperity for our countries and for the world. I reiterate my message delivered in Riyadh, America will always stand with our partners against terrorism and the ideology that fuels it. During this month of Ramadan, let us be resolved to spare no measure so that we may ensure that future generations will be free of this scourge and able to worship and commune in peace. I extend my best wishes to Muslims everywhere for a blessed month as you observe the Ramadan traditions of charity, fasting, and prayer. May God bless you and your families. Thank you, President Trump, and may God bless you for telling the truth about this evil religion. Now let's contrast that statement with the statement that President Barack Hussein Obama made just last year. As another new moon heralds the start of the holy month of Ramadan, Michelle and I extend our best wishes to Muslims across the United States and around the world. For many, this month is an opportunity to focus on reflection and spiritual growth, forgiveness, patience and resilience, compassion for those less fortunate, and unity across communities. Each lesson is profound on its own, and taken together forms a harmonious whole. It's also a time of year that brings some of the best dishes to the table across the world as families and neighbors gather for iftr. Here in the United States, we are blessed with Muslim communities as diverse as our nation itself. There are those whose heritage can be traced back to the very beginning of our nation, as well as those who have only just arrived. Doctors, lawyers, artists, teachers, scientists, community organizers, public servants, and military members, each night will all break their fasts together in cities across America. As Muslim Americans celebrate the holy month, I am reminded that we are one American family. I stand firmly with Muslim American communities in rejection of the voices that seek to divide us or limit our religious freedoms or civil rights. I stand committed to safeguarding the civil rights of all Americans no matter their religion or appearance. I stand in celebration of our common humanity and dedication to peace and justice for all. And in this month of reflection, we cannot forget the millions of lives that have been displaced by conflict and struggle, across the world and in our own backyards. Far too many Muslims may not be able to observe Ramadan from the comfort of their own homes this year or for it to celebrate Eid with their children. We must continue working together to alleviate the suffering of these individuals. This sacred time reminds us of our common obligations to uphold the dignity of every human being. We will continue to welcome immigrants and refugees into our nation, including those who are Muslim. As I have done throughout my presidency, I look forward to opening the doors of the White House to Muslim Americans during this special occasion, this year for an Eid celebration marking the end of Ramadan. I can think of no better way to mark my administration's last celebration of Ramadan as president than to honor the contributions of Muslims in America and across the world for Eid. Ramadan Kareem
This is why the United States of America should never again elect a man who was raised in Kenya and whose name is more Islamic than even the name Osama bin Laden is. No Barack Hussein Obama. The U.S. is not a Muslim nation, and it will never be one. Ramadan is one of the nine pillars of Islam and originated as an observation of the first revelation of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. The same prophet who turned Islam into the religion of Satan by promising 72 virgins to any man who dies killing so-called infidels. In other words, any of us here today who understand that Islam is not a real religion but just a violent cult which needs to be stopped. During the month of Ramadan, scumbag Islamists all over the world abstain from all food, drink, and other needs such as smoking and having sex. No wonder they are always so upset about everything but I bet the goats are happy this month. Although President Trump is away on his first overseas trip, Secretary of State Rex Tirson broke with a tradition established by the sexual predator President Bill Clinton's administration in 1999 of hosting a Ramadan event in the White House. Why was this even a tradition to begin with? And why didn't President George W. Bush put a stop to it after he saw 3,000 Americans die on 9-11? Why was the White House as taxpayers pay for celebrating this cult? When has Islam ever paid any sort of reference to Christianity, Judaism or any other religion the world has to offer, to offer?